Hi, I'm Matt Maurer. I'm a statistician at Mayo Clinic um, here today at ASH at 2019 to talk about our research in uh, relapse DLBCL. So diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is uh, the most common type of aggressive lymphoma in the Western world. It's a bit of a unique entity in that most patients are cured with upfront therapy, typically RCHOP. However, um, patients who aren't cured with upfront therapy typically have pretty poor prognosis. Um, there's a lot of activity in this space right now, both uh, clinically and as well as research development of, of new drugs with CAR-T and other targeted therapies in the relapsed refractory setting. So it's a very interesting space for research. Um, but there isn't a lot of good um, prognostic data on what uh, identifies patients who are gonna do well in the relapse setting or not gonna do uh, well in the relapse setting. Um, so uh, we undertook a project uh, with collaborators from the SEAL cohort. So the, the SEAL is a, a a, a group of, of clinical trials that are assembled to do um, patient level data and look at outcomes. So it's data from 13 randomized clinical trials of patients who are, are uh, uh, diagnosed and, and treated with immunochemotherapy regimens. So we looked at the patients in the SEAL cohort. There were over 5,000 patients to start and there were about over 1,000 who ended up relapsing. And so we looked at those patients, tried to identify what are factors associated with outcome after progression. And uh, we identified that age and as well as the time to progression on their initial immunochemotherapy were strongly associated with subsequent outcome in, in relapsed DLBCL. So we ended up building a prognostic calculator out of these two variables. Very simple thing to apply clinically, um, just two simple variables, uh, and, and then developed a, uh, a prognostic calculator for this. Um, so then we went, uh, we wanted to make this useful clinically, so we went and then validated these results in, in an, uh, two additional cohorts. So we looked at uh, patients with relapse DLBCL in our uh, University of Iowa Mayo Clinic Spore Molecular Epidemiology resource, as well as a, a Danish population-based cohort of patients. And so um, the calculator does a very nice job. It has about the same um, prognostic ability as the IPI does in the newly diagnosed setting um, in terms of concordance. So identifying if a patient is considered high risk, then the patient will have poor outcome. It does a pretty good job with that. What we found is when we validated is that the model actually underestimated patient survival, which um, uh, some of that is due to, to treatment selection and the heterogeneity in, in um, uh, how patients are managed, and as well as our discovery cohort being a little bit older. So um, we're continuing to work on trying to improve that, potentially looking at patients with uh, curative intent and how if we can refine the model in that setting. I, I think this has um, uh, usefulness for both researchers and uh, uh, clinicians. Um, we've developed, uh, it's available through uh, the Calculate app uh, from QXMD for point of care, for, for making um, information uh, and providing prognostic information for patients at the time of their their uh, first progression or relapse of DLBCL. I think as CAR-T and uh, other things continue to move in this space, being able to identify who, who is high risk and, and who isn't will, uh, again, provide um, information potentially about who are the patients going on these trials, uh, who are the patients that would be good candidates for these types of therapies. So um, we're excited to present this research on Sunday at the ASH meeting and uh, hope this will, again, continue to aid clinicians and researchers in their, um, um, uh, and how they, uh, um, in their practice as well as uh, provide information, prognostic information for patients about, uh, about their disease and, and their prognosis.